bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the feature race at Santa Anita on Sunday. It's race number nine, the $100,000 California flag handicap. We're going down the hill at about six and a half furlongs. This race for Calbreds. Let's take a look at this field. And it looks like a pretty competitive bunch, Mike. The number six, the chosen Bron, is five to two on the morning line, despite the fact that he's still a maiden on turf. He ran very well in his one and only turf start, the California Dream in around two turns. He's just a versatile sword, a graded stakes winner on dirt, and it seems distance isn't an issue for him. Yeah, that's. I think all those things are true. Um, I, I don't necessarily feel like, you know, cutting back here to six and a half is going to bother him. Um, his only turf start so far is fine, um, and his overall form is really good too. I mean, I don't, you don't know how how short a price I would necessarily want on him, but uh, certainly you have to take his chances pretty seriously here. But he's coming into this race in good form, and he should get a good pace to attack in the stretch. As we throw up the Time Form U.S. pace projector, it's a red bar scenario in Time Form U.S. parlance that indicates. The potential for a fast pace and the three sunrise journey is very fast out of the gate i would expect him to be up close along with the one hot box coming off a gate to wire victory uh hail freedom the seven that horse is also very fast there is the potential for a barbecue I thought it was going to be a, a relatively fast pace, and I agree with the three horses that uh, the pace projector has up there, Dan. All three of those horses have a lot of speed. Hot Box, the number one, is going to be stepping up into a stakes race for the first time, but he deserves the opportunity. He's won three out of his last four starts sprinting. Now, those races were five-eighths of a mile at Del Mar, completely different ball game going the downhill six and a half. Let's watch his most recent start, second-level allowance at Del Mar on September the 1st. He just speed popped this field, but he's getting a little bit late in the final 16th. Yeah, he's getting a, a little tired here. He's just going to hold on, and this is going five furlongs. Um, now he's got to go six and a half down the hill, and he's got to do it, Dan, in a race um, where not only is he up in class, it's a race that has plenty of other speed for him to have to deal with. Um, to me, there was just a lot working against this horse. The third place horse from that last race did come back to win a second level event with a 91 buyer speed figure. The number two is none above the law going out for trainer Peter Miller. And I wonder if this horse is slowly rounding himself back into shape. This is going to be his fourth start of the year. His most recent start on dirt. He ran OK. I'm more interested in the turf race. Two starts back the Del Mar mile. That was a pretty tough spot, Mike. I was pretty amazed that the eighth place horse came back to the board in the Joe Hirsch with a 100 buyer, a grade one the other day. Yeah, I mean, th this horse didn't have uh, necessarily have a great trip in that race either. Um, I I didn't really know what to do with him, Dan. You know, first of all, I don't know that I like him sprinting that much, although they cut him back on the dirt last time, and I guess he ran fine. Um, the main, the big turf win that he's got on his card, the grade two Del Mar Derby last year, I mean, he got an absolute perfect trip in that race uh, to get the job done. And I'm not, you know, just not, I'm just not blown away by this horse's form, but um, boy, they, he's got good company. And I don't mind him cutting back. I like cutbacks going down the hill, especially late runners that should get some pace. And he's going to get some pace with a horse like the number three, Sunrise Journey, breaking directly to his outside. Sunrise Journey is a very likable horse. He's won 13 of 38 in his career. He just scored at Los Alamitos on the dirt last time out. And he has won four races on the turf. I think there are always class issues here for Sunrise Journey. He's taken a step up. Yeah, pretty big step up, too. Um, boy, has uh, Steve Knapp gotten him back in good form, though, since he claimed him. His, his last three races are all good. Um, that's a good sign for this horse, as you've already pointed out. The surface switch isn't really supposed to matter. He's a multiple winner on all three surfaces. Phineas, the number four, is going to be making his turf debut in his first start for trainer Peter Miller. He was grade one placed as a two-year-old, a stakes winner on dirt against fellow California breds. Not sure there's a ton of turf in this pedigree. Stay thirsty, 7% with his turf sprinters. The dam was a stakes winner on synthetic. It's more of a synthetic dirt pedigree. Yeah, I didn't see enough turf in his pedigree to really get interested in him here um, based on his form overall. I know that they've run him in some good races um, I don't see the race that makes him a serious contender in here unless he's just way better on turf. And um, I just don't see any reason to believe that's going to happen. 
And the number five, Jetta Vader, might have the right running style for this race because while he's pretty quick from the gate, he's also shown the ability to stalk and pounce. And I can see him sort of lurking in the second or third flight ahead of the true closers and getting the jump on them turning for home. Let's watch his most recent start going three quarters of a mile at Santa Anita, second level allowance race. We see him on the outside. He's going to grind it out. He's not the best gate horse in the world. And you have to always be a little bit concerned that if he gets off slow, he could be completely out sprinted, but he is in good form right now. And this is a game win. Right. It is game. And, and if he does, you know, wind up off the pace this time, it's really not going to, it's not supposed to be that big a deal because they should be going fast in front of him. Uh, I guess he was okay last time. Then he won at six and a half uh, back in February of 2021. That wasn't down the hill, but it was this distance. And in that race, he just got loose on a really slow pace, um, which obviously isn't going to happen here, but he's shown that he doesn't need the lead. The number six, the chosen Braun, is a multiple graded stakes winner on dirt, graded winner, sprinting, graded winner, routing. His one and only turf start came off a long layoff in his seasonal debut at Del Mar going two turns. Let's watch that effort. The California Dream and Stakes, and we see sort of over in behind horses turning into the stretch, and he's going to weave his way through. He only gets beat ahead. Since then, he ran in the Pat O'Brien, a graded stakes race where he might have been in a little bit too tough. He scored uh, a gone dirt last time out at Los Al. This is a likable effort that shows he handles turf just fine. Yeah, it does. I agree. He's a horse that I kind of like cutting back a little bit, too. I think the, the shorter distances might be good for this horse. Um, you know, I, we'll see what kind of price he is. He's another horse, you know, who I just, again, I don't really want short prices necessarily in this race, but he's certainly a contender. Stakes debut for the sharp number seven, Hail Freedom. Trained by Dave O'Neill. Mike Smith takes them out. This horse has won four consecutive starts. His last three on dirt, but we'll, start, we'll watch the race that began the streak going down the hill, during the spring at Santa Anita, he showed good speed. He set a legitimate pace, and he kept on going. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously a good performance. Um, the one thing that those four, all, all those four wins recently have in common, Dan, is he was just in control of the pace every time, and that's not going to be easy for him to, to accomplish this time. I respect that he's in good form. Um, I respect that Doug O'Neill has gotten him to run much faster races recently, even though they're on dirt. Um, all those things, I think, are positives. There is a race, though, um, going this distance uh, last year where he was in against one of the rivals he's facing today, and he was no match for that horse um, in that spot. And it just feels like he's going to have a way tougher time on the lead in here. I think a long shot to consider, at least on the very bottom of your single race exotics, is the number eight smugglers run, because I really like this horse cutting back in distance. He's a stakes winner over this distance on dirt, but he also ran really well sprinting on the turf early in his career. Last time out was a first level allowance race. He had a tough outside post position. He didn't do a lot of running until the very end and then came with a mild finish, but that was a good field. The runner up came back. He's That horse has won three of his last four and he won with an 89 buyer. Yeah, I know. I, I don't I didn't really know what to do with this horse, Dan. I remember when he, he won first time out, you know, uh, earlier this year. I was really impressed with that win. And I can't say that I really liked anything that he's done since then. Um, I just don't really know how good he is, um, although I suppose he'll be a good price in this race. The big question mark in the race is the number nine, Aligato, because the last time we saw Aligato, he did this on turf in the unusual heat turf classic, going a mile and an eighth, where he sat mid-pack, angled four wide, turning into the stretch, and settles things pretty quickly once he's angled into the clear, and he beat a decent enough field. The horse that ran sixth would come back to place in a couple of stakes with buyers of 91 or 92, respectively. The problem is, this race was all the way back in January, so he's going to deal with a 10-month layoff while cutting back in distance. Yeah, the cut, the cut back in distance, I don't care about at all. The layoff is a little bit more concerning. I did like his win last time, but prior to that, Dan, they sprinted him three times on turf. I thought he ran really well in all of those races. That maiden win last October. Hell Freedom had everything go his way that day, opened the clear lead in the stretch. This horse got clear and absolutely ran right over the top of that horse going this distance. And I thought he ran great in his next two starts. He just didn't quite get there. This horse has obviously had his share of problems. He didn't make his career debut till August of his four-year-old campaign. And now he's coming off of a 10-month layoff. But he has shown ability when he is right. And I think when you have a horse like this, you don't waste races on preps. I think you have him sharp off the bench. The 10 is Coast of Rhone, who scored an off-turf race last time out. Two back at Del Mar, first off the Jeff Mullins claim. Didn't really do that much, although didn't really break very well. Then had a little bit of a tricky trip. 
Yeah, he, he's won sprinting in the past. Um, I feel like this race is probably going to be a little bit too tough for him. But I'll tell you what, he likes to sit and, and make a run from off the pace, and he should be able to do that here. And he has won from route to sprint in the past. I was just a little bit disappointed with this race going a mile three back, a race where he was the favorite and he made the lead and was just no match for the winner. The 11 straight up G, like Phineas, is going to be trying turf for the first time. I think this horse has a little bit more turf pedigree. Straight Fire is a very young stallion. He's gotten off to a good start with his turf horses, especially turf sprinters. The second dam was a stakes placed on turf in Brazil. Just fold a couple of nice turf horses. Uh, yes, there are some class issues. This horse was good enough to win a stake at Sunland earlier in the year. Yeah, that wasn't the most impressive win in the world, but he did get the job done there. Um, I don't know, Dan. I guess he, you're right that there's a little bit of turf pedigree, which makes him a little interesting. The question is, are they switching the turf because he's got a little pedigree for it, or are they switching the turf because his recent dirt form is abysmal? He does have a lot to prove, and even though he does have turf pedigree, it might not be enough to handle this quality field. It looks like a good field in the California flag. Let's take a look at our top pick, and we're going to not be dissuaded too much by the layoff. The nine, Alagano, has shown a lot of ability. I think he has the right running style for this race. He's going to be closing late. I'm going to trust that Mark Ladd has him fit. Yeah, I am too. I want this horse off the layoff here. I like this distance for him. I just like all of his races on the grass, Dan. And I think he might get a little bit overlooked in here because he doesn't have those flashy running lines that some of his rivals have. 9265 for Mike, 9152 for me for the feature at Santa Anita on Sunday. It's the California flag handicap. Best of luck.